Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Motion Blur node. And this is another DaVinci Resolve node available within Fusion and in a studio version only. So we're going to jump into Fusion and I've got a couple examples and uh, Motion Blur is Motion Blur. And a lot of times we use it just for an effect, for blur effect. Like if we have text or something, we want to uh, add some motion blur to some text. But a lot of times we use it on regular footage as well. And like this first example, you can tell it was uh, like shot on an extremely like a high frame rate. And it's way too clean and it just doesn't look natural. So if I play it back, even though it's kind of playing back in slow motion, there's really not realistic motion blur like we typically uh, are used to. It's just too clean, not much motion blur at all. You can see it's just barely there on her foot. And then our other example in green screen footage, a lot of times we uh, shoot at a different uh, shutter angle so we can minimize this motion blur because it allows us to get better keys. So the less blurring we have around all these edges, the easier it is to get a nice clean key. So when we do that, we want to add motion blur back in and post after we do all the keys so it looks natural. So this is another reason why we would use motion blur. Let's do this one first and we're just going to add a delta key here. And on our delta key here, I'm just going to pull a quick key and not worry too much about it. This isn't a keying uh, breakdown. So that's our key. So to be able to add motion blur, say we went through and added our background and did all the stuff we needed to do, we need to reintroduce motion blur on our keyed footage. So to be able to use the motion blur node, first we need an optical flow because it uses uh, the vector data within the optical flow node to create motion blur. So I'm going to add a optical flow. And if we look at our optical flow now, and we go to our channel, you can see now we have vector channels. So after our optical flow, I'm going to add a motion blur node. And on our motion blur, we have uh, three ways to estimate our motion type. And it is faster, better, or none. So uh, basically what this is doing is it's providing more accurate mapping at the expense of being more uh, taxing on your system. So if I uh, want better, I can use better. Under our motion range, we have uh, large. So what this is doing is it's uh, kind of determining what speed of motion to consider when defining the uh, regions being blurred. So we can select large, medium, and small and uh, again sometimes there's no change sometimes there's large changes it just depends and the best way to do it is to uh, play your footage and flip back and forth between these three ranges to see what you like better under our motion blur if i stick it down to zero that means it's applying none and the more i raise it the more motion blur it is applying Under our advanced controls, we can select whether we want our blur going in both directions from our previous frame to our next frame or towards our next frame. In this granularity, all this is doing is defining how uh, much detail is applied to those actual motion blurs. Just know the more you raise it, the uh, more taxing it's going to be on your computer. So this is what you would add on your keyed out footage that you didn't originally grab motion blur to get more motion blur. Now just know when you do this in keying, uh, you wanna watch these because whenever we key, we always worry about our edges, these dark edges, and it's gonna be compounded by this motion blur. If we uh, zoom in here, you can see these dark edges. So make sure you're getting your key correct so you don't have these issues later down the line. And then our regular footage here. So again, if we look, we can see it's uh, kind of stagnant. So we can find a place that we want to kind of adjust our blur. 
and it's that foot because that foot really isn't moving much it's not realistic so again our optical flow is giving us that vector data so we can go to our motion blur and under motion blur we can uh, change how much motion we want to change so if i want to add it just a little bit more motion blur i can or if i wanted to add a whole lot i could but i'm just going to add a little more so it's not so uh so sharp and unrealistic so that is the motion blur node i will see you in the next node breakdown